So we are buzzing. Do you see that? Education Minister Fable Williams says she'll be pleading her case directly to regional educational leaders for a delay to this year's sitting of the CXC exams. Now, the minister says she'll be calling for an urgent meeting of the CARICOM Council for Human and Social Development. That's the COSAD. Get COSAD. Okay. As CXC continues to reject calls to adjust its scheduling. Now, last week, President of the Caribbean Union of Teachers, or the CUT, Dr. Garth Anderson, requested a three week delay to this year's exams. Now, CXC says the timing of the examination schedules was determined following a, an agreement at a council meeting in December 2021 by representatives from participating governments. Now, it says there are multiple stakeholders with whom the council has to consult and the public schedule for the examination reflects the best consensus attainable. Now, the regional body says an adjustment to the schedule will destabilize the regional consensus. Mm. They said that a delayed start to the examinations would negatively impact the date to the release of the results, affecting candidates' ability to meet the matriculation period for pursuing higher education, as well as scholarships, applications, and many, many opportunities. Now, in addition, it will compromise the commencement of the next academic year, and thus perpetuating the disruptive impact on the education system. The Education Ministry, in collaboration with the National Secondary Students Council conducted a survey between February 23 and March 8, and they asked students about their preparedness for the CSEC and the CAPE examinations. Now, of the 2,812 students surveyed, over 1,700 of them expressed the need for additional time to prepare for the sitting of the examinations. Now, consultations were also held with principals, and over 90% of them express the need for more time to prepare. I feel like in you reading that, I get a sense of where you stand on that. <laughs> Over 90%. You know, no, I feel okay. like you're kind of, yeah, no, going at the story then. That I'm niche, that, start the thing. At the very start of the lockdowns, <laughs> yes. at the very start of containment measures, mm -hmm. I did say, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me. Yes. I did say yes. that there would be the impact on different sectors of our economy, sec sectors of our society, that we wouldn't be able to really calculate until we're seeing the effects of it. Yes. Didn't yes. I say that? We did. And didn't I specifically say that schools and students would be adversely affected? Yes. I have a couple more now. I'm not giving sweetie, no, doctor. I feel like you want me to give a sweetie. I'm not giving no sweetie. I'll give you a sweetie. You know, so I'm Listen, <laughs> I can't do it. Okay. I can't do it. That's fine. Leave I can't do it. No, I want my hat. You want your hat? All I right. want my hat. So, now Elon Musk clinched a deal to buy Twitter. No, we, we don't talk for, about the story already? Eh? We don't talk about the story? Yeah, we, we are. Anyway. Now, no, he actually clinched a deal to buy Twitter for $44 billion. Say what? On Monday. I lent him the money. You now, did. the transaction said, yeah. will shift control of the social media platform populated by millions of users and global leaders to the world's richest person. It's a seminal moment for the 16-year-old company that emerged as one of the world's most influential public spheres um, and now faces a string of challenges. Yeah, so discussions over the deal, which last week appeared uncertain, accelerated over the weekend after Musk persuaded t Twitter, Twitter shareholders with financing deals of his offer. Mm. Now, under pressure, Twitter started negotiating with Musk to buy the company at the proposed $54.20 per share price. Mm -hmm. And what else? Go on. So there's a laundry list of goals that Elon apparently wants to achieve with the takeover. Now, beyond addressing the free speech problem he sees, <sighs> Elon has reportedly also talked about longer tweets, 
pivoting away from ads and getting rid of spam bots, which he sees as a pest. Now, Elon has also talked about making Twitter's algorithm open source. And that simply means we'd be able to see why things trend the way they do and why exactly we're seeing certain tweets on our timeline versus others. Essentially, <coughs> more transparency on how Twitter operates internally. Now, of course, with him taking the company private might also mean that this becomes a subscription-based service, especially if he's serious about putting a stop to advertisements. You know what I want to say? I want to jump in here quickly and say something. Jump. I remember back in the day when MySpace, remember MySpace? Mm. And MySpace no, was I don't. so... You do. Stop talk. We know say you're not... We know what's about, like, uh, couple, MSN, couple gonna centuries gonna, ago. No, you're going to go MSN and all these. Right? High, high I know five. the young people are like, my space? High five. Is that like, what is that? My space is my, my, my space. room. But, right? My bed. Anyway, the point is, right, I remember when there was a time that you couldn't even fathom a world that it, was, it wasn't pivotal in how you communicate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, just, it was just the most important thing. Like, everybody was like, yo, my space is how I get a job, is how I communicate with others, how I share music, all that good stuff. And then Facebook came in, and then Facebook was was Facebook was, was the the thing, right? You know, mm -hmm. and then Instagram came in, and then Twitter. I mean, Twitter's been in, but you know, Twitter kind of elevated. Yeah, the Twitter is My here. point is, I say all that to say, we are all watching carefully to see what Elon does right. with the ownership of Twitter, right. because I think it's so dominant now. We all love that freedom that you can say anything on Twitter, except for Donald Trump that can't say anything. Mm -hmm. But the rest of us can say anything on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I am a little concerned that one man has that amount of power over what we can and can't say. I, I don't think that has changed. Well, well, I think it will. No, I, we're watching it. And my point wasn't, is... Twitter wasn't group-owned before. No, it wasn't. Right, so it one wasn't. man had it. So now... It wasn't. No, what has happened is that the richest man... No, but Twitter richest... has gone through a lot of stuff now. I don't even remember when the, 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 the CEO of Twitter stepped down because he was getting some pressure for something because he wanted to go a freedom and they were like, no, we want to capitalize on it. So Twitter has been... No, I, I think... I, I think I'm just saying I, I it think has... there, I think there's pros and yeah. cons to, to one person owning it. No, it's con and because, con, Because It's not con and con, what, because what will happen? Him being this influential... Mm -hmm means that he can't be bullied into doing certain things. If he says, hey, listen, I'm going to make it like this, and everybody's happy with it, then naysayers, because you have naysayers mm -hmm. and other people saying it should change and should this and yeah. should that, then it can happen. But it also can be that, hey, yeah. him said these things have to stay this way and nobody don't like it. You see, my thing, so is, pros my and thing is, and I don't care what it is, absolute power corrupts absolutely everything, whether you're absolutely good or absolutely bad. So absolute power. Speaking of which, listen, Google has rolled out a new inclusive language function that is intended to steer its users away from what it deems to be politically incorrect words. Google Docs introduced the woke feature this month that shows pop-up warnings to people typing in words or phrases considered to be non-inclusive. And then it goes a step further by suggesting an alternative, more inclusive words. For example, it might suggest humankind instead of the gendered mankind or police officer instead of policeman. Now, many computer document systems use methods to correct spelling and grammar, but nudging users towards woke language is being seen by critics as a step too far. Now, tests on the system have also thrown up major flaws. For example, it flagged the word motherboard, which is the name given to the main printed circuit board within a computer. <clears throat> the, online, ooh, the online document editor raised issues with Martin Luther King Jr.'s iconic I Have a Dream speech, suggesting replacing the fierce urgency of now with the intense urgency of now. Okay. Meanwhile, a transcription of an interview with former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke, where he uses the N word, spoke about hunting black people, and says a host of other unacceptable things about black people, prompted no inclusivity alerts or warnings. 
A Google spokesperson said that its controversial assisted writing feature is undergoing evolution. <laughs> or ongoing evolution. She said, assisted writing uses language understanding models which rely on millions of common phrases and sentences to automatically learn how people communicate. This also means they can reflect some human cognitive bi biases. Now, our technology is always improving, and we don't know yet, and may never, <laughs> may never. have a complete solution to identifying, mitigating all unwanted word associations and biases. And now, there goes freedom. The end is near. That's freedom of speech going right there. And so right I there. face the that's, final curtain. That's freedom of speech right there. Yeah, I feel this is this is really scary um, where we're going. I think, I think sometimes, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm concerned. This is all. I'm concerned. What you call politically correct words. That's just a matter of choice, you know, a matter of perception. Because what is politically correct to me don't necessarily mean it's politically correct to you. Yeah. In my social space or my societal space, it don't mean that it's 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 okay in your space. So then who draws the line? Yeah. Because this basically because we're seeing where stuff is falling through the cracks. That's what I'm saying. But if we're talking about political politically correct, then calling somebody a the N-word is obviously not, but that was okay. So then what is the, what, Which, what algorithms are you using? I, I, all, you know algor what I'm algorithms are written by individuals. Exactly. But here's my issue with it. My issue is this. We're also taking away the onus from people. Don't be racist. Don't be, you know, like, so it can be hidden. The computer will hide your biases and your racism and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it takes away the ownership from you. So I'm not down with it. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, I think we should talk about it a little more after the break. Mm -hmm. Because they Daytime be... Live, mm -hmm. we soon come. We have buzz. More buzz. Well, I, I'm, I just, I, I'm I'll, buzzing. Be, I'll be back. We buzzing. We soon come. I'll be back. I'll I don't be... know if he... You know what? We soon come. Join us after the break. <laughs>